Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. So today I am going to be doing my November wrap up video. And I read three books in November, so let's just jump right into them. So the first book I'm going to be talking about is The Night Gardener by Jonathan Augsier. And this is a middle grade horror story or spooky, scary story, and it is about these two um, orphan children who um, are traveling to this house for a job. So they get to um, this house and meet the family, and they are pretty, they get the job for to work at the house, kind of like doing cooking and cleaning, taking care of the outside garden and all of that stuff. And so, um, they get a job at this house, but what they didn't realize was that there's something kind of creepy, kind of spooky going on with this house, um, because there's a tree outside in the yard, and, um, it's like this mysterious tree, and this mysterious man who shows up at night, they call him the Night Gardener. And he's connected to this tree. And just the tree has a way of um, giving people their, what they want, their wishes and desires, what they want but it comes at a cost. And so, um, that's pretty much the premise of this. It was interesting. I really enjoyed it. It kept me captivated. Um, I will say, you know, it, to me, it wasn't scary or spooky, but again, I'm not the intended audience for this book. So, for a middle grader, um, I can see it being creepy and spooky, um, and it might scare some middle graders. For me, it didn't, but again, I'm not a middle school student, so I'm an adult, so it wasn't creepy or scary to me, but um, I still enjoyed it nonetheless. I believe I gave this a, I believe I said four out of five stars on Goodreads. Um, so I did really enjoy this still, and I would definitely recommend it if you're into middle grade stories, if you're into kind of, um, middle grade horror, spooky, um, I think this would have been a perfect read around Halloween time, because it has that feel for it, um, but I read it in November, which was still okay, it still got that fall creepy time feel, so, um, I enjoyed it. The next book that I finally finished in November was A Game of Thrones by George R. R. Martin. I finally finished <laughs> this book, I started it last year, last summer, in like August, and put it down for quite a while, and then kept picking it up and putting it down. But I finally got through it, and I actually listened to the audiobook on Audible. Um, I listened to the audiobook as I was uh, reading this, which helped it go by so much faster. And if you or, um, if you're the type that does like audiobooks and does like listening to, um, audiobooks, I would recommend, um, the Song of Ice and Fire series on the audiobooks because I think the narrator, the narration does great as an audiobook, like, the different voices that they use for the different characters it really feels like it brings the story to life. 
And so I would definitely recommend the audiobook for the series. I'll probably end up getting the rest of the series on audiobook as well so I can listen as I read along. And so um, Game of Thrones, there's just so much that goes on in this book. So many different plots and subplots that I wouldn't even know where to begin trying to give a synopsis or summary of this book. So I'm just going to link the Goodreads, um, the link for Game of Thrones on Goodreads. I'll link it down below because I wouldn't even know where to begin to try and explain this book. But I'm sure most of you already kind of have an idea of what this book is about because it's a pretty popular book that everyone talks about. So I'm sure, you know, you probably already kind of know what it is about. But if you don't, I'll leave the Goodreads link down below. Um, and this is a fantasy. Um, it's um, kind of middle age uh, time period and fantasy. So if you like that, I would suggest Game of Thrones. If not, probably not. Um, it, I will say it did take me quite a while to finish this. One, because I had watched all of season one before I read the book. And if you guys have read the book and watched the show, you guys know that it sticks, um, the show sticks pretty closely to the books. And so for me, it was like, well, I've seen the show, so I already know what's going to happen. I know the major stuff, the important stuff. I mean, I'm sure they leave out little details here and there, but I know the major plot points that's going to happen. And so for me, when I already know what's going to happen in a book, it takes me forever to actually finish it. Because I'm like, I'd rather have a book where I don't know what's going to happen. But um, I still enjoyed it. I think I gave this four out of five stars or four and a half out of five stars. Can't remember. But um, I still really enjoyed it. I will say the pacing with this one kind of slowed down a bit in the middle. And it starts to drag on a little bit in the middle. Which is part of the reason why it took me forever to get through this until I got the audible book and then I pretty much finished it quickly because of the audiobook. But um, yeah, the pacing kind of drags a little in the middle. Um, but then it picks up at the end and it's so good. I will say I did like the multiple point of views in here. Normally I don't like books with multiple point of views. But I think um, Martin does it really well in in A Game of Thrones. I feel like the transition, it transitioned perfectly. And like, I was definitely interested in each character. I didn't have that feeling like with some books where I'm like, no, go back. I want to I wanna find out what's going to happen with this character. I was equally invested in... I think each of the character stories so whenever it switched to a new one I was like okay cool we're gonna find out what's gonna happen with them now so I in that sense I did like how he did the multiple point of views and I think the transition uh, went very well with this um, I will say kind of one downside to it is this character or this book has a huge character cast and the main characters it's not hard to figure out who's who and keep them straight between the main characters but there's also a lot of side characters and supporting characters that because they don't have such a big role 
it is a lot easier to confuse them. Um, and I was like, okay, who's, who's this and who's that? So, I will say the side characters, because there were so many of them, and also they go by a couple names as well. Some of the side characters go by like two different names. So then you're like, okay, is this this person or what? what's going on? So I will say in that sense, the side characters were a bit confusing. But as far as the main characters go, um, you'll have no problem keeping them straight and telling the difference between them. It's just the side characters that were kind of confusing. I love the characters in here. Daenerys is my favorite character. I just absolutely love her. And I love Arya. Arya is so fierce. She's so tiny, but she's so fierce and strong and not afraid to speak her mind. And I just love Arya. Um, I am afraid of what is going to happen as the series goes on. Um, <laughs> mainly because I've heard from so many people, everyone who's read the series or watched the show always says, do not get attached to any character because Martin always kills off all your favorite characters. And I can see that because... Um, even with this first book, I was not expecting him to kill off one of the main characters in this first one, and he does, and it's just like, I really like that character. I love that character, and you killed that character off. So, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of nervous to see where this is gonna, where the series is gonna go. It's so like I said, I love Daenerys and I love Arya, and I'm just so afraid for them because, yeah, no one's safe in this world. No one. And the last book that I read in November was A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. And this is a middle grade story as well. Um, and it's about this boy named Connor who um, has a lot of struggles in his life that he's going through. Um, his mom is pretty sick and he's being bullied at school. And he has a lot of struggles that he's going through in his life. And one day... The tree outside his house in his backyard comes to him. Um, it's a monster but in the form of a tree. And it comes to him and says, you know, it's going to tell Connor three stories. But then at the end, Connor has to tell the monster a story. He's got to tell him his truth. So, I'll just read you the back because it's really short. And it says, An extraordinary novel of love, loss, and hope. The monster has come calling for Connor, and it wants the most dangerous thing of all. It wants the truth. And it also says this was, um, this was inspired by the final story idea of writer Shabon Dowd. Um, so this was a story idea from Siobhan Dowd and, um, before her passing, I guess she didn't get a chance to write it, but Patrick Ness kind of took it and made it sort of his own. And so I really enjoyed this. I gave it a five out of five stars. It is really short and the font is pretty big and spaced out so you know you can pretty much fly through this in one sitting um i 
I got through it in like a day just because I had other stuff to do but um yeah you can pretty much survive through this in one sitting because it's super short um I do wish though that I had gotten the edition that has the pictures in it um this one doesn't have any pictures in it but um if you get a chance to get the edition with the pictures I would recommend it because I feel like that would have added more to the story and to the atmosphere of the story. So I wish I had the pictures to um, look at as I was reading it because I think it would have added more to the story. I do really enjoy the writing. There's so many good quotes in here, you guys. You guys know I love... Um, book quotes, if you guys follow me on Instagram, you'll know that I usually try to post, try, being the operative word, um, to post, like, at least one book quote of the week on Instagram, and, um, actually this week I posted a quote from a Monster Calls. I actually posted two quotes from A Monster Calls because there's just so many quotes in here, you guys, that I absolutely love. I just really enjoyed the writing. So, um, and I'll, I'll have the link for my Instagram and all that fun stuff down in the description below. So, but yeah, I, like I said, I really enjoyed it. This had such you know, strong themes in this book about, um, you know, facing our truth and not running away from it, but also finding the courage to keep going and move on. And it's got such deep messages about hope and um, loss and grief. And I just, I really, really enjoyed this. That's pretty much it for my wrap up, you guys. Um, let me know in the comments below if you've read any of these books, what your thoughts um, were of them, and what books you read in November. Let me know, and I will see you guys soon with another video. Bye.